a very good morning, Swim. So iridocorneal endothelial syndrome is a rare disorder characterized by structural and proliferative abnormalities of corneal endothelium leading to a corneal edema, RSA atrophy, and a secondary angle closure glaucoma. It typically occurs in a unilateral middle-aged woman, sporadic in presentation with no congenital and systemic association. The true etiology is still unclear, however. Can we have the slides, please? The true etiology is still unclear. However, the HSV and EBV infection have been proposed. Uh, in this particular condition, the ICE cells are pathognomic. Their corneal endothelial cells are abnormally large and show increased pleomorphism and epithelial-like activity. Abnormal endothelial cells may migrate posteriorly, forming a membrane that covers the adjacent structure, iris, and trabecular meshwork. Now, there are three variants to this syndrome. The Chandler syndrome is the most common where the corneal endothelium shows an hammer silver appearance with minimal or no iris thromal atrophy. Second is the Kogan Reese syndrome, which is characterized by diffuse iris nevus or an iris nodule. The third is the progressive or the essential iris atrophy, which is characterized by severe iris changes, including heterochromia, marked correctopia, ectopian uva, pseudopolychoria, iris atrophy, and a broad-based pass. Now, we report a case of a 42-year-old female patient which came to our OPD with a complaint of pain since last eight months in her right eyes. There was a diminution of vision in the right eye and a constant headache in the uh, a constant headache for the last eight months. Uh, the, uh, the patient developed pain, uh, which was pricking in nature throughout the day, and she noticed progressive diminution of the vision with constant headache. There was no aggravating factor. Painkillers provided relief. There was no significant history of redness, watering, hollows, or trauma. No history of similar complaint in the other eye. Past history had no significant history. Family history, there was no relevant family history. On physical examination, things were normal. Systemic examination also did not reveal anything. Ocular examination, the visual equity in the right eye was decreased to 636. Left eye, it was 66. There was no improvement with pinhole or refraction in the right eye. The extraocular movement in both eyes were within normal limit. Uh, the intraocular pressure, when we did well, the best corrective with the applanation tonometry in the right eye, we had 28 millimeter of mercury. In the left eye, it was 18 millimeter of mercury. Uh, on gonioscopy, the there was a peripheral anterior synechia present in the right eye with, with a slit angle in the right eye. The anterior segment examination revealed that uh, the, in the right eye, lids were normal, conjunctiva was normal. However, the cornea showed DM folds, microcystic uh, epithelial edema, superficial corneal vascularization, and interface haze. The anterior chamber was shallow. The pupil was irregular. Ectropin UVA was present, which was not reacting to light for near. The lens had an immature cataract. Left eye things are normal. Now this is a diagram. This is the photo of the patient where we can see in the right, right eye showing corneal edema, irregular pupil, and ectropin uvea. The left eye was absolutely normal. On the fundus examination, the fundal glow was present in the right eye. The media was slightly hazy. The disc, however, we were able to see it was uh, within normal limit. The cups disc ratio was 0.4. Macula was uh, good, and the background was normal. In the investigation, routine blood investigation was done. Serology for HSV and HBV were negative. Perimetry, right eye could not have a reliable report. However, when we sent the patient for a specular microscopy, the right eye shows polymegathism. Left eye, there was no change. So our diagnosis was the patient was having a right eye progressive iris atrophy, which is a variant of iridocorneal endothelial syndrome. We advised the patient to have a bandaged contact lens. We put the patient on uh, Travoprost, uh, one drop at 9 p.m. We, uh, did, uh, we also advised the patient to have hydroxymethyl cellulose right eye one drop three times. We followed up the patient. By this time, the complaint of pain in the right eye had decreased. The IOP was within the normal limit, and the patient was kept on uh, monthly follow-up for the evaluation of IOP. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, you, you report one case of progressive virus atrophy. I mean, if you look at the literature from Indian eyes also, the progressive virus atrophy is the most commonest one compared to Chandler's. Chandler's is more common in the U.S. and some other parts like Asian countries. But in Indian population, I think there are good studies and uh, it's more common. Okay. Uh, considering progressive virus atrophy, you would like to see also in the follow-up how they behave. Because it's like 
you may not see, uh, you may not exactly call it progressive or entropy at one time point. It's just the way the assigning it progress with time. Yes, That's the time we review your diagnosis. So yes, sir. Yes, It's not that rare, though it's mentioned rare, but it's not that rare in engineering. True, ma'am. That's very true. So what was the idea of starting prostaglandin analog in this scenario? We were trying to reduce the intraocular pressure, ma'am. So you already told it is an inflammatory condition. There yes. And there was progressive virus atrophy. Yes, ma'am. So we tend to avoid prostaglandin in such a situation because it okay. might increase the inflammation. Yeah, so the, why yes. not to put them on beta blocker and alpha 2 agonist? It can be done, ma'am. Right? Yeah, it can be done, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.